Hello friends and welcome to Study Tonight. As already clear from the title of this video, I will be talking about machine learning in this video. Machine learning is a buzzword right now and everyone wants to learn machine learning and understand it. But at times it becomes difficult for a beginner to understand the various concepts of machine learning, machine learning categories, various models involved in machine learning and understanding the right direction or roadmap to follow when it comes to pursuing machine learning. So this series is an attempt to help you understand the roadmap to learn machine learning while explaining you all the concepts to help you progress. Let's start with a basic introduction to machine learning. There are multiple different definitions for machine learning and I will try to cover a few of them in this video while explaining them in simple language and with examples so that you gain multiple perspectives and are able to better understand machine learning and why it is required. So let's see the first definition. It says, machine learning is a field of study that provides computer or machines capability to learn without being explicitly programmed. So what does it mean? Traditionally, what we used to do was write a program, load it onto a computer, provide the right environment for the program's execution, and all the computer used to do was run the program as it was, asking for user input if it's mentioned in the program, and execute the statements one by one to return the output. We all know that, right? But now, with machine learning becoming more and more popular, we expect a little more from the computers or machines that we use. Obviously, they have so much computational power, why shouldn't we put it to use? So let's take an example to understand this. When you visit an e-commerce website for the first time and start exploring it, using the website search to look for some required products, and if you like the product, maybe you end up buying the product. What do you think the website or the application did while you performed all these operations? Obviously, the website or the web application, it's just a program, which is meant to perform actions as per the user input, which in this case are you. For example, if you enter a search query, it will show you the search result, picking up data from its database, when you click on add to cart button, it will add the product to the cart. And when you complete the payment, it will create an order for you and the operations team will receive the order in their admin dashboard, right? This is how a basic e-commerce website works, which is explicitly programmed to perform actions based on user input. Now in almost all the modern e-commerce websites, when you visit the website the second time, what do you see? you'll see recommendations or suggestions similar to the product you searched for the first time. How did that happen? Has the developers written the code for the website in such a way that the user interface picks up dynamic products from the database based on what users like and create homepage with similar products? Well, pretty much yes. But how is the website doing this? How does it know what I like? Well, from your search history from the last time, isn't that obvious? But there are millions of users accessing the website daily and each user search for multiple products. Many of them just open these websites for window shopping, which means just to explore what's new and never ends up buying anything. And many of them are there just to compare prices. So many different use cases and data points which are collected all the time. How the hell can we write a program which can satisfy all these conditions and produce accurate results for suggestions? The traditional programming approach will fall short to solve this problem. But even if it can be used to solve this problem, it will be very difficult to implement this and it won't be efficient. And for this, machine learning comes to a rescue. As mentioned in the definition above, machine learning enables computers or programs to perform actions without being explicitly programmed to do it. But they would need something to do so, right? A computer is not a god after all. They need data, lots and lots of data. And this is where we use the computational powers of computer, which we humans don't have. But we humans have power to think and learn. So in modern world where we had a choice to either increase our computational powers or to make the computers think, we chose the latter. Yes, we work towards making the computers learn as they already had immense computational power required to process terabytes of data within minutes. Let's take another example. Traditionally, there used to be a traffic policeman standing at a junction managing the traffic. 
Then we moved on to having automatic traffic lights programmed to work based on time durations. But having just time-based traffic lights is a traditional approach of providing a program to perform some operation, which couldn't manage the surge in traffic from one direction or multiple directions and led to traffic jams. Or a policeman was still deployed alongside automatic traffic lights to manage the traffic. Overall improvement, zero. But now, in many countries, traffic lights are operated by machine learning algorithms, which have access to a lot of historical data related to time of the day in which traffic from one side is more than the other side, data based on weather, like in rain, we have more traffic on roads. Then in the areas where there are more offices, we know that traffic surges during office hours, in summers, during afternoon when the temperature is soaring, we have less traffic on roads and along with all these conditions, the data also has what led to more traffic jams and how it was solved. Then all this data together collected over years can help a machine learn how to perfectly manage the traffic in different situations. And this will be a continuous process, which means more data will come in and the machine will become better and better over time. And this concept is called machine learning. So when we write a program, we provide the computer with a program and in most cases an input and the computer executes that program to produce an output. This is the traditional way in which programs were written. But in machine learning, we provide the computer with an input and the output for that input. And it's the duty of the computer to make a program or a logic or in machine learning terms, a model to you know, work based on those inputs and outputs to train itself so that with new inputs, it can generate output using that model. The computer cannot do this from just single input, obviously. Now it sounds a bit confusing. Let's take an example to understand how this input output works to create the program. Now, for example, you give input as two to the computer. And for this input, you tell the computer that the output is four. So the computer will start thinking and it will come up with a simple program for this one input output data set. It will say, okay, when I receive an input of two, I have to uh, provide the output as four. Now, to make this more generic, we need to provide the computer with more data. So we'll provide the next input as four and the output as eight. And we'll go on like this until the computer starts to understand that the output is double of the input which is provided. And once the computer understands and creates a program or a model for this, if we provide a new input to the computer, which it has not already seen, it will use the program to give the output, which is the double of the input. So this is how computer learn through uh, receiving input and output data. And over a period of time, it creates a program or it creates a model around it to, you know, uh, properly function using the input and, uh, you know, providing the best output for the input. So this is just a basic example of how the computer learns. It is quite similar to a student learning for exams where the data sources are textbooks, college lecture notes, online videos, etc. And the student side by side gives mock tests to verify the learning, which is matching the input with an output. And finally, they have the knowledge based on a lot of data and giving tests that they can go in exam and answer all the new questions correctly. I hope now you have a basic idea about machine learning. So let's see a bit more complicated definition given by Tom Mitchell in 1997. He said, a computer program is set to learn from experience E with respect to some task T and some performance measure P if its performance on T as measured by P improves with experience E. Now it sounds a bit confusing, but let's, you know, tear down the definition to understand what does it mean. This means that if a computer is assigned to perform a certain task, which can be anything like traffic light management or recommendation system or some prediction of sales, etc. And we set a performance scale for the computer to check if what it's doing is right or not. Then the computer can start learning by performing some action and checking the performance scale if it led to a positive signal or a negative signal or a positive score or a negative score and storing this experience then doing something else and then again checking the performance scale if it scored positive or negative and storing the experience again and continue doing this until it knows through its past experience that what actions led to a positive performance and what actions led 
to a negative performance while performing the task T. And this is exactly how humans learn by doing stuff over and over again while improving with every attempt to achieve the desired output. Take an example of you throwing a basketball and trying to put it in the hoop or the ring with the net to score point. With every attempt we make, we try to better our chances of scoring. If our throw fell short of reaching the ring, we will try with more force next time and the same for angle and directions too. We will keep on improving with each attempt or at least we will try to improve until we are able to score. And this is exactly how we have algorithms which can be trained to learn. So machine learning is divided into two stages. One is training part and one is operation part. During the training part, we provide uh, the machine learning algorithms with inputs and outputs. The machine learning algorithm takes the inputs, matches the output, and using the input and output, creates a model, a learning model, which it can then use to you know, uh, predict output when only inputs are provided to it. And this complete cycle is repeated over and over again. During the training uh, process, a lot of inputs and outputs are provided to the computer or the machine learning algorithm to enable the machine learning algorithm to reach close and close to the output itself. So every time an input is provided uh, to the machine learning algorithm, the machine learning algorithm provides an output. Then it matches that output with the actual output. And the difference between the output provi provided by the machine and the actual output is the error. So the whole motive of machine learning algorithm and the machine learning operation is to reduce this error to minimum. So uh, you must have seen that, you know, uh, certain machine learning algorithm is 99.9% accurate or 93.4% accurate or 96.5% accurate. So this accuracy is how many times it is able to predict the correct output when it, you know, uh, processes 100 inputs. So if for 100 inputs, 95 times the machine learning algorithm can predict the right output, it's 95% accurate. And this is how the whole uh, machine learning system works. So I hope this video helps you in understanding the basic concept of machine learning, why it is required and how it operates in general and how it is different from the traditional programming approaches. In the upcoming video, I'll talk about what are data sets, what are input data sets, what are labeled and non-labeled data sets to understand, you know, the input and output data because data plays an important role in machine learning. And then we'll move on to various categories of machine learning, which is supervised, unsupervised, and reinforcement, and some other categories as well. So stay tuned. And if you like this video, do share it with your friends, and do subscribe to Study Tonight's channel 